Japan's role as an international financier has earned them breakthrough relationships across the Asian continent. The East Asian powerhouse has been cooperating through aid, loans, or even donations in bid for helping build some of Asia's most promising countries. Out of all the nations it has helped in the continent, one of them has always stood out, India. India is slowly becoming the next economic powerhouse and is expected to rival the United States and China in the coming decades. Japan, a country that is lagging behind due to its collapsing demography, has been helping India's economy. Its assistance ranges from equity acquisitions to technical cooperations, and most importantly, as for our today's topic, debt. Yes, Japan has always been a lender to many nations, and India is no exception to it. Japan is doing these through many factors. From its official government representative known as the Japan International Cooperation Agency, or even through private institutions, like those Japanese banking companies. And this form of loan to India has helped push the country to build infrastructure and infrastructure. And to top it off, it is also known that India has always been a top recipient of Japan's ODA. So the most important question is arguably, how much is it? How much does India owe Japan? How much did Japan lend to India? Well, it is quite a difficult figure to summarize. First, what we need to understand is that Japan has been lending to India for decades. And some of them have been paid, some have not. It is also known that Japanese loans have interest rates as low as 0.01%. One could argue that these are basically free money at this point. What is there for Japan to gain? Nothing. In fact, they may even lose out to inflation due to its extremely low interest rate. Yet, what does India gain? A lot. But to truly understand the quantitative figures behind Japan's loans to India, let us take a close look at some key data points published officially. First, we have the so-called JICA, the official government agency. Through JICA, Japan has lent India billions of dollars, or in Japanese yen, trillions. These are done through what Japan calls as Official Development Assistance, or ODA. One data source that estimates between 2010 to 2020, Japan has committed over 3.1 trillion Japanese yen for infrastructure projects in India. That's nearly 30 billion US dollars. That is massive, and that has helped the country a lot. Another data set published by MOFA has shown that Japan, until 2016, has sent over 53 trillion Japanese yen to India. That is also another big figure. These 53 trillion yen is denoted as loan aid. And as per the official report, it goes to different sources of the country, from sewage treatments to building bridges and roads, and even more metro projects. Further, most of these loans are not sent as a US dollar. Instead, they are sent as Japanese yen. Now, of course, we really can't name every single project that Japan has helped India for, but we already know a lot. And to give just a few examples of some of the most significant, these are the dedicated freight corridor project where Japan has sent over 116 billion yen for its phase two to the Mumbai Ahmedabad high-speed railway, which according to a March 2023 press release, saw the disbursement of over 300 billion Japanese yen. Now, after the government sourced money, we are still forgetting one factor, the private sector. Yes, Japanese financial institutions play a huge role in India's economy. Although, of course, not as big as the government, but like JICA, there really is no singular figure, as these loans are extended with a vast array of history and data. But to give you a clue of what it may actually look like, we can see some examples. See, in June 2023, a two-step loan was announced to the State Bank of India. The Japan Bank for International Cooperation, along with Mitsubishi UFJ Bank and Sumitomo Mitsu Banking Corporation, has signed a 13.5 billion yen loan to the State Bank of India. The money, according to the official press release, is going to be used for the development and operation of the City Gas Distribution Network business run by AGP City Gas Private Limited in India. Another loan by Japan Bank for International Cooperation in March 2023 saw a 2.6 billion yen co-financed again by Sumitomo Mitsu to Indian company Antony Lara Renewable Energy Limited to help fund waste to energy projects in India. Now, JBIC has extended billions of billions of loans to India, whether through the state bank or through private sectors. But we can already see what's going on here. 
Japan's banking sector has indeed been helping lend out loans to India's private sector. Now, thirdly, we must also not forget about a crucial and hidden factor, the Asian Development Bank. ADB, a regional development bank, has a history in India. ADB, which is stationed in the Philippines, is actually a somewhat Japanese-led bank. What we mean is that Japan has always been amongst the largest shareholders of the bank. And its president since its inception in 1966 has also been Japanese. Now, ADB has operations in India since 1986, and according to its official website, it has cumulative commitments of over 59.7 billion US dollars worth of projects and technical assistance. You may already see just how important India is to Japan. Not only are they present through official ODA, through Japanese banks, or even through a regional development bank stationed outside the country, they are basically one of India's, if not actually India's biggest development partners out there. The funny thing about all these, as we noted earlier, is that Japanese loans tend to come with very small interest rates. You can see these through the official JICA website, where they publish individual projects along with details about interest rates, length of repayments, and other minuscule details. But what really matters is that most interest rates sit at 0.1 to even 0.01%. And as we noted earlier, if India takes out a loan that has an interest rate of 0.01%, then it would be a huge win for the Indian economy. For the Japanese economy, on the other hand, how can they profit from 0.01%? It would be a no-brainer to just invest it in other investment vehicles out there. Yet, they still chose to lend it to India. Now you ask why? Well, it's simple. Diplomacy, regional stability and security, historical ties, trade relations, and economic considerations. But most importantly, of course, it's all about diplomacy. These low interest rates not only boost Japan's diplomatic relations, but also influence trade and reputation. So, at the end of the day, we can say it's a win-win situation. But anyway, do let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.